Hello again, and it's time for another project. Today we're going to route out this Route 66 plaque on a scrap bit of fencing wood. Nothing too fantastic there. It's six inches across, only because the wood is six inches, by seven inches. We'll route out all the white stuff, just so the six and the route bit stand out. Paint it white, and then we'll put the black on afterwards, or we might just stain the wood and darken it down a bit. As always for me, stick your template on, put your carbon paper underneath like so, and literally draw over it. That way you can use this template over and over again. Once you've drawn around it, we've got our image there. Happy days so far. The only issue I will have with this wood, it is quite a cheap nasty wood to be honest, but it is ideal for practicing with, is going around this with the CNC bit for this lettering. Then going out the inside, around the outside, and removing the background. Chances are we might lose some of this. If that's the case, it'll just be a 66. But anyway, we'll give it a try and see how we get on. As always for me with these, I'm going to use my little CNC bits. They come in different degrees, 15, 20s, 30s, right up to 90s, I believe. I've only ever used 20s to 15s. And that is a small little shaft on them. They also fit into a Dremel, but for a collet, should I say, for a router, you need a collet like this, a 6.35 mil. That is now a quarter inch shaft on it, and that will fit nicely into your router, no problem. If you have one of them Dremel attachment things, you could pop that straight into your Dremel and do exactly the same. And what we're going to do with this one is go around all the outside lettering, all the way around here, all around here just to separate the wood from one piece to another. Because I think if you're coming with a big piece straight up to this lettering and try and get around there, that's going to break off for sure. So to make, to make sure, we'll just do a separation line in between. And when it comes up, hopefully, we say hopefully, they're not going to pop off. So we'll go all the way around with our CNC bits. Once we've done that, we'll put on our mill end bits which are these ones here. These are nice because they have a carving outside as well as a bottom. So when we put them in to do the clear out, it should have a nice smooth finish or near enough for what we want. This is only going to go outside on the side of my shed with the rest of them. Okay then, let's get this bit into our router and we'll start routing this one out. Just a quick one, before we start routing this one out, because we're coming so near to the edge with our router, and I have such a small base on mine, the chances are you're going to start getting a bit rocky. So what I do is put a piece of wood of the same thickness, the same level, straight across, and when we come in with our router like so, we've just got more of a base to work on. If that wasn't there, when we come to do the endings, it's just going to start getting a bit rocky like that. So, a bit of scrap wood, and it just allows you to run on a bigger surface to stop that going on. Also, I like to keep a bit of scrap wood to one side, with different depths that I've used on previous projects. You can mark these out proper, 1 to 10, and I basically pick one that I'm comfortable with, sit my router onto that, and set it to the depth I need. And then I know, when I come back, I can set it to the same one if I've been using the router on something else and it's going to be the same for this one as well. Okay, that's all done. Let's start doing our lines on this one.
Right, you can see from that, we've gone all the way around. Don't worry if it's not perfect. That's what sanding burrs are for and sandpaper. We can soon sort this out. Doesn't matter if it's not perfect on the line. That's nothing to be concerned about. Right, I did notice when I'm doing around the 66, it's quite deep, is that? So I've brought it up slightly, so these will be at different heights. we just got to remember that when we come to take out the surrounding areas. As always, I've made a little depth gauge there. So when I put this mill end bit into the router, and that will be a simple case of removing the CNC bit like so. And that just literally just slides in exactly the same. And then we pop that back into the router. Set the depth to this one and start removing all the surrounding area. And then literally when we come to the top one, we'll lift it up slightly and set the depth to that one and remove all that area. And hopefully these letters will stay in place. They come in various sizes, so you don't have to go right in for a chunky thing. I mean, they do one that's so small, as soon as you put it in the wood, it snaps. So you lose one within the first 10 seconds. But they do, they do vary, and these are ideal. Mill end bits, they also fit the Dremel. Right, let's pop one of these in, and we'll set it to our deepest one, and start removing the background from the 66. Right, we've cut all the way around that with our CNC bits, mill end bits. I don't know if you can see on there, but you can more or less see the depth. It's quite deep is that one. That should have probably gone round twice. But I did it in a one and we got away with it on this occasion. No need to put unnecessarily strain the bits and your router. So take your time. This one's a lot shallower and obviously that's skimmed over that a lot easier. Our letters are still intact. It's rough around the edges, but that's the wood, to be honest. That's nothing to do with the bits or the way we're doing it. It's just the wood. I mean, there's a curve on that, look, so that didn't help. If you put it flat, it'll bevel like that. So it's just nasty, nasty wood, but I like it, and you get used to it. And once it's all sanded down, painted, this could be oak, sycamore, ash, cherry, or whatever. Nobody be any wiser once it's painted. Okay, I'm going to get the scroll saw now. I'm literally just going to cut this out. And then we'll start sanding it down with our Dremel bits and just, just tidying up these edges. I'm going to use a spiral blade today just to cut around these. We'll do those next.
Right, we've cut all the way around that. That didn't take too long. I do like those scroll saw blades. I've mentioned them on my previous videos. You don't need a lot of this turning and twisting all the time. You can just fold the line gently. No, it doesn't matter if you don't get it perfect. That's what sanding burrs and sandpapers for. I'd rather sand a little bit off than come in too tight and you've made a mess. But we can see the shape that's happening here. So far it's looking pretty cool. I'm happy enough with that. We'll get general sandpaper now, some sanding burrs and sand it all down before we get to the painting side of things. Right, that's plenty of sanding down for me. Remember, this is just for the side of my shed at the end of the day. So I don't want to spend too much time just using up a bits of scrap wood that are lying around in the workshop. Okay, painting time. We're definitely going to have to do the background white just to make that stand out a bit. I, I would have left it like that just with linseed oil on, to be honest, but we'll throw some paint on. So white background. Good old painters, touch paints. These are ideal, indoor and outdoor. They come in little pots like that, so. And they go fair way. So, white background all over. Look at it, gently sand it down. Just so we make these lettering a bit crispier. And then we'll put the black on top and black down the sides. And this little project will be finished. Right, let's put this paint on. Right, that's this little project finished. I sprayed on some of our sealant stuff, which I use on most of my projects. Just gives it that little bit of a shine, makes that black really pop out nicely, as you can see from that. I had my concerns about painting the sides, but I stuck with it and I'm, I'm pleased I did in the end. That's come out fine. Now you can route out your slit, put your hanger on, whatever you want. This one's just gonna go on the side of my shed. So one routed out route 66 plaque, six inches by seven inches on a bit of fencing wood. Thank you very much for watching.